On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women creep to find the place where people had entombed you. They bring the spices they prepare to anoint your body there and there, but there they found that something happened to you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Although the light was barely dead, they saw the stone had rolled away, the tomb was empty, someone had removed you. The women, they were so perplexed, they wondered what would happen next. When two dazzling guys, they whispered hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He told you he'd be sacrificed. Did all those words he said mean nothing to you? Hallelujah. 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 When Christ was still in Galilee, he said he'd hang here on the tree. Why are you still here hanging out in Judah? Don't you remember what Christ said? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here for Jesus Christ has risen. Hallelujah. 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 Then they remembered all your Struck your disciples as an idle tale, acting like some sexist males. Nobody there would give a hallelujah. the light. He knew he could and should believe the women. So Peter stood and he left the room. He ran and he looked into the tomb and from his lips croaked out a hallelujah. so far. It's a hallelujah, but it's an incomplete 
hallelujah. It's a hallelujah in process. It's a hallelujah for our times. Maybe it's a hallelujah for this point in our lives. At this point in our story, Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women who've been traveling with Jesus have a, an experience that tells them that suddenly things are not the way they thought they were. Things were not exactly the way they thought they were going to be. They had thought that the journey they had been on was over. These five or six or seven women had been on the road with Jesus from Galilee in the north all the way to Jerusalem, walking on that dusty, hot road. Luke tells us elsewhere that this group of women were the producers of the ministry of Jesus. They've been providing the funding. They've been handling the logistics. They've been following Jesus and learning from Jesus. They've been with Jesus all along. They've been on the road, and it's a long road, and they thought they'd come to the end of the road, the road that they thought would lead to hope and redemption had led instead to pain and to loss. The road had led up to a cross, and the road had led down into a tomb. These five or six or seven women had been with Jesus the whole time, Luke tells us, and Jesus had been with them the whole time, and now Jesus is with them no longer, except that now they get an inkling that something is different than they thought. They thought that hope was lost, that it was buried, dead in the ground. But maybe Jesus is not dead, and maybe hope is not lost. But at this point in the story, they don't have a lot to go by, do they? They have a stone that's been rolled away. They have an empty tomb, mysteriously empty. They have the word of two dazzling strangers that Jesus is not there, that Jesus has risen. It's a, it's a hallelujah, but it's a, an incomplete hallelujah. It's a hallelujah in process. It's not a triumphant hallelujah as of yet. At best, it's a hallelujah of hope. And so, I believe it's a hallelujah for us. It's a hallelujah for our times, for these times that we are finding ourselves in. So then the women, they go and they tell the disciples about this news, this hallelujah of hope, and... Well, you know how far they get with that. It's dismissed as fake news, as a, an idle tale. These followers of Jesus, who had heard from Jesus' own lips what was to happen and how it would happen and why it would happen. But when resurrection happens, they refuse to believe it. These guys had one job to spread the good news. They had one job. And when the time comes, they're like, nah, uh-uh. <laughs> these giants of the faith, these rocks from which the beloved community will, will spring up, these, the church of Jesus Christ is to be built from them, they re prove remarkably resistant to the resurrection. And ever since, we've done our level best as a church, to resist the good news of the good news, right? I can understand the disciples' reaction to some degree. It would have been dangerous for them at that point to believe, to believe the women. It would have put their lives at risk to believe Jesus. So they, they reject the news. This morning, Lee and I came up with a new tagline for our faith tradition. Want to hear it? thought so. The Christian church resisting resurrection for 2,000 years. <laughs> it's hard. I got to get that copyrighted. It's hard to take in the resurrection. It's hard to feel its meaning in our sometimes broken lives. There's a gospel song some of you may know called Hallelujah Anyhow. Anybody? Yeah, well, I'm not going to sing it to you, but the words go like this. I believe I'll testify, God's been good to me. <laughs> Through every test and trial, I got the victory. 
the enemy has done his best to make you turn around and bring me down. But my God never failed me yet, so I'm going to stand my ground. No matter what comes my way, I'll lift my voice and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. <laughs> Yesterday, Jenna and I were working out a way to get these lovely swoopy banner things up over your heads. Yeah. they would stay <laughs> over your heads. <laughs> and we decided it would be easier and safer rather than scaling a 40-foot ladder up to those windows. It would be better to climb out onto the roof and uh, attach them from the outside. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> I was out first, and I was explaining to Jenna that you should just put your foot right here and then, whoops! <laughs> Next thing I knew, my feet shot out from under me, and I landed butt first, can I say butt? Butt first on a wet, drippy, and very slippery roof, but I did not fall off. And the first thing I thought was, hallelujah, anyhow. <laughs> and then this morning, somehow, sometime between the sunrise service and, and quite recently, I managed to lose my sermon. <laughs> and as I searched frantically, thinking, well, it's Easter, there's, there's always something to say, I thought to myself, well, hallelujah, anyhow. No matter what comes my way, I'll raise my voice and say hallelujah, anyhow. I'm in a hallelujah, anyhow space in my life in general. I don't know about you. You may know that the United Methodist Church, the denomination I was born into, raised by, that I've sworn by, and stood by, and that has stood by me, is in real trouble. At best, it's about to fall apart, and that's at best. But sometimes I just need to say, you know, God is still good, God is still alive, and hallelujah. Anyhow, our political climate, I'm not going to really go there, but our political climate is baffling to the point of comical, except that it isn't funny. But I am trying to say every day, hallelujah, anyhow. And every day brings new news of a rise in hate crimes, resurgent racism, pernicious sexism, rationalized homophobia, anti-immigrant fever. Even God help us on the lips of some followers of our brown skin, wildly inclusive, welcoming, table-turning, anti-colonialist Jesus. But God is not mocked. God is not mocked. And Jesus is still Jesus. Hope is still possible. So I'll lift my voice and I'll still say hallelujah anyhow. As you know, churches have been burning from Paris to Louisiana. As we know, worship birds are threatened to the point of death in churches in Sri Lanka, in a mosque in New Zealand, in a synagogue in Pittsburgh. And it's hard sometimes, in the face of that news, to croak out even a broken hallelujah. But I live in hope. We live in hope. We worship it in hope. We pray in hope. The thing is, hope is a theological concept. It is, indeed, the assurance and substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. It's not a denial of reality. Hope is a recognition that things the way they are don't need to stay the way they are. That's what hope is. Because God's not done with us yet. Amen? God's not done with us yet. Amen? Amen? Because the God of the resurrection can reach into the graves that we dig ourselves and can draw us out. Amen? Amen? Thank you. For the God of the resurrection is able to do abundantly much more than seems possible to us right now. Because on Good Friday, when Jesus says, it is finished, he never says, I'm finished because he's just getting started. Amen? Amen.
who are we to say it's hopeless? I don't know how, just how you may feel. For me, the world seems so unreal. A world that badly needs the news of Easter. And we, even when it all goes wrong, I'll stand beside this little song with nothing on my lips but hallelujah. Sends us pouring to the streets to love the loveless souls we meet with nothing on our lips but hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, you they thought was down, they thought they trapped you underground. So sure at last they had overthrew you. You show them how the weak are strong. You shatter tombs with a faithful song, singing triumph songs of hallelujah. Hallelujah.